And Central Bank of Nigeria holds its 284th meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee today, March the 21st. Uh, the Monetary Policy Committee convened for the first time this year, back in January, and unanimously decided to hold the benchmark interest rate at 11.5 percent while keeping all other monetary parameters unchanged. So what will they decide? Well, joining us to discuss further is Arise Business Analyst Chika Mbona. Chika, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, how are you today? It's the kick off the week, a new, new week with new you, week, sir. New week, new <laughs> yes, sir. Mm. We'd like to start with the MPC. MPC. Yes, um, what, do you, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's look at what, should, what normally should happen. Yes. You know, um, worldwide, inflation, inflation has been ticking up. Yes. And um, almost running away. Um, for almost all the economies of the world, U.S., U.K., and then um, you notice like last week. Therefore, as the economies are inflation is ticking up for most of the economies in the world, what the central banks should do, therefore, is to raise the monetary policy rates. Mm. When you raise the monetary policy rates, it means you're making borrowing more expensive yes. and then reducing the quantum of money in the economy, mm. therefore moderating inflation. That's how it should play out. Indeed, in Africa, um, early this morning, we saw that Egypt... You sent me that yeah, sent story, you, yes, thank you. Yes. Egypt 20, raised their rates. 2017, yeah. raised yeah. their rates also because of, again, this almighty Ukraine-Russian war, mm. uh, the runaway prices of um, 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 gasoline and so on and so forth. So that's what sh should happen. Mm. And the expectation for Nigeria also, you saw the last inflation figure that came out also, yes. it ticked up to about, I think, 15.7%. So ordinary... Um, uh, other things being equal as economies, the three parables. Yes. They should, uh, you know, inch up the, the M rates. M multiple rate from mm. 11.5 to something higher. But Nigeria always acts on a basket of so many other things. Growth in our economy is still very tepid. Mm. Um, CBM pushed out a lot of uh, growth intervention programs to assist uh, uh, economy get out from the, re the recession that we were in. Yeah. And uh, the question, therefore, is... Uh, uh, these initiatives, have they permitted the economy? Mm. Have they reached the maximum, maximum impact in the economy before you start reversing them right. or before you start introducing inflation moderating uh, initiatives like increasing the, the, benchmark, benchmark, uh, the benchmark, benchmark rates? Right. Uh, this is just trying to explain it for a little bit for our viewers. Mm. And so those are the three issues that confront uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria. And the other thing that's going to happen also is that where will inflation be? In the next, you know, next month, right? Because uh, the pass-through effect of those I impact wouldn't wouldn't see much. So, I think in the basket of everything, as Central Bank of Nigeria may actually hold hold their rates, okay. hold their rates, and, and let's see what will happen. Okay, and maybe with the next uh, um, shortly, they will actually start moderating that. Maybe hold the rest of the half year and mm. see the good growth impact we're going to have. Fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, Chika. You mentioned intervention. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, apparently in the power sector, yes. 104 billion naira mm -hmm. for critical projects. You know, uh, what you, do know you, make of you that? know, I mean, <laughs> the, maybe the question will be like, why, again, is CBN governor being the minister of power? Right. Why is the central intervening in power? You know, I, I, I train bankers, and those lending to the power the generating companies yeah. and the this disco, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, discos. I, I use them as uh, the case studies of poorly crafted ro loans, mm. uh, but crafted badly in the sense that that time they were the banks in Nigeria were central bank actually told the banks in Nigeria to support the those discos and jenkos, the so that the, the, the production will not collapse. Mm. So that's how those lendings came, came in play. They were actually almost like mandatorily made. Now, those lendings are actually going to resort to MPLs, uh, non-performing loans. Yes. And the quantums are major. And if those things are not done, it seems does not intervene by providing new money to assist the old money that is there, mm. and, you know, we may have more problems. A bigger issue. Bigger right. issue. Right. And I guess that's why Central Bank is trying to uh, uh, um, support. Moreover, where do we head to? The, 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 the best thing would have been for those discos and jenkos to have the structures and the cash flows that will attract external investment. Mm. But somehow, these things have been battered. And so, attracting external funding has not been good. They have not been very pleasant and beautiful price to banks right. outside the system because of the issues of liquidity and, and other problems in the, in the value, uh, power value chain. So, the honest therefore is on our central bank to make sure that that 
things are done properly mm. to protect the banking system, the digital banking system. Because a lot of non-performing loans will uh, actually result. Right. Because a lot of banks lent out to this um, uh, uh, discos and jenkos because of instructions given to them by government then mm. to support the privatization. Now, how does CBM fund this? You know, that's critical. Yes. You know, the CBM just going to print money. But remember, CBM also had uh, there's a World, World Bank initiative. Yes. To support this privatization being administered by CBN. There are fundings in that, in that respect, mm. which are not CBN has not exhausted. Right. So uh, there are bigger issues for the economy. Everybody's been aff affected by this. And if this will help the power system to stabilize, I'm sure that's what CBN is doing it. Fantastic. What, what do you make of the IMF saying the CBN should scale back its interventions? <laughs> I mean, with well, all I the mean, help it's provided. You know, but we see the issue is that yeah. what IMF has done, IMF is doing, is the script. The script. Right. The script, basically, is that IMF defines how the fiscal system of every country will play out. Everything defined, variables, you know, predictable. Mm. Now, when interventions happen like this, especially during the COVID, COVID situation, they create distortions in the economy. Mm. You know, the multi-policy rates, the liquidity ratios, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, CBN has used so many quasi uh, this thing, uh, mechanisms in monitoring the economy and chasing growth in the economy, the yeah. CRR, even modified CRR. So, World Bank is saying that this is great distortion in the economy. We understand when, when you did them during the COVID era, but COVID is tapering mm. now. Yeah. So, you need to start scaling back. Hmm. But Central Bank is saying that these are peculiar things for our country. Right, exactly. You know, what works for another economy may not work for us. Yeah. They have, we have had certain impacts or effects of these initiatives, and we let them you know, um, uh, simmer down mm. before we actually pull them out. And that's basically what that is. So, so yeah, IMF is, is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Right. That the initiatives like this, interventions like this are extraordinary. Mm. And the ones that are now out of the rule book, they, they distort the economic system of the country. Thank you for that, Chika. Uh, we confirmed that uh, one of the bank's GTCO oh, was reducing oh, 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 hours oh, oh, oh. as a result. We've, you've talked about diesel <laughs> extensively all of last week, Chika. The rich also cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy um, where, where I stay, in, uh, where I live, and my street normally is pummeled by ta -ta 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 -co 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 generators, you know. But now, for the last uh, one week or so, everybody's carrying that initiative of GTV, you know. <laughs> well, mother, I was asking my my guys this morning, my workers this morning, and uh, they said, oh, I don't hear it's all guy that everybody's just uh, being yeah, managing. that they ma were managing. That's a word that some people run their generator up till twelve in the night and put it off till morning. Mm. And uh, so, I, understandably, um, that's what's happening. Remember, critical to every bank is the cost of income ratio. You've talked about that. Cost a lot. of income ratio. Yes, yes. Because of the power situation in the country, most banks, bank branches, have two generators. Now. A GTB 200, 300 branches. You can imagine the number oh, of generators they, they gosh, have. Yes. A one hour cut back on power operation will, you know, how much seven is going to have. Yes, yes. And for GTB, GTB, for example, they used to open the banking hall till about 5 p.m. Yes. That was extraordinary. Right. Yes. A key marketing in initiative for them. Yes. Now they're scaling back to about four, you know, normalizing with other banks. So no, it's not extraordinary. But the demand will survive. You know? Yes, <laughs> <indeed>. <laughs> The key driver here is the cost income ratio. Correct. I'm ordering the cost. Yeah. Because the cost of this is actually run away. If something moves from 190, even 200 to about 700, mm. you can't, even the calculator cannot calculate the growth, the increase, you know, and, and that's why. And everybody's um, affected. Mm. And, and, yeah. and you said that until the war in Ukraine mm. Mm -hmm. subsides, we're still... Mm. The key input I said, you know, is, is the price of crude oil. That's, a, you know, as on the moderates, you know, and then availability, uh, apart from that, the supply chain issues, yes. you know, and... Once that price doesn't moderate, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have to continue, continue this regime, mm. especially. And, uh, and the diesel prices are going to just hang up there. Wow. You know. mm. Well, our Ryan's business analyst, Chikan Bono, always taking us through the, the, the critical issues. Yeah, we appreciate you coming. And we'll see what happens with the MPC yeah, later yeah, yeah. today. Thank, Thank you, you Chikan. Bye.